QuickBooks Desktop 2023, credit card bank feed add data. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Bank Feed Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time in the view drop down. We got the hide icon bar open windows support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it list checked off the open windows are open on the left reports drop down company financial profit and loss pl changing the range 010123 to 123 customizing the report so we can go to the fonts the numbers and change them up to 14 okay yes okay then reports drop down company financial this time balance sheet standard the other fave of ours that's our favorite from 010122 to 123122 and then the fonts the numbers need to also change to match because they have to be matching yes and okay so then we're going to go to the banking drop down bank feed center which would only have bank feed center if you set it up which we did in a prior presentation we've now uploaded two bank feed items one for the checking account one for the credit card account we're going to be moving on over to the credit card account looking at the unrecognized items in them and adding the general data so there's two main things that are going to be a little bit different from the checking account on the credit card account that we want to think about one when we enter the transactions they'll be much the same however instead of decreasing an asset account the checking account the normal transactions when we buy stuff will be increasing a bad thing a liability account two we're going to have to pay off the credit card which usually is paid off from an item from the checking account so then we're going to have bank bank feed to bank feed transactions we'll deal more with them in future presentations but just a quick recap of the general rules we pulled the stuff into what i call bank feed limbo here which is where we would be whether we connected directly to the bank or if we downloaded the info from the bank and then uploaded as we did this time noting that it's not generally going to be able to pull all the way through to the financial statements to either verify or create the financial statements it's going to be stuck here in what i call bank feed limbo because it doesn't have enough information such as the vendors the customers and the accounts we have similar information as you might have for a bank transfer in the checking account like an electronic transfer in the credit card that being that we're gonna have the date which is relevant because that's gonna be close to the date the actual transaction took place given the speed of an electronic credit card transaction we've got the information the banking kind of information here and sometimes a memo type of information and of course the amount being an increase or a decrease oftentimes this detail will give us the payee that we're that we're going to be paying the vendor however quickbooks cannot just populate automatically a vendor so we want to make sure that we set up the vendor so that we can track the stuff by vendor and not just by account it gives us another added level of of checking and verification detail to our financial statements in the following month due to us setting up rules as we enter the data then the system will be able to see hey look this is the same person over here or company or whatever so we're going to then memorize what you did last time if we set up the rules properly and then we can automate things a lot more efficiently going forward that's going to be our goal that's our objective so if we if we record a transaction it'll move over here to add it to the register remember that this one kind of washes out every time you upload or start again in the register and then if it was recognized it'll pull over here waiting for you to give the final AOK -okay to pull it into the system partially recognized would go into this category we're currently all in unrecognized 
I'm going to sort by this item here and let's look at we've got uh, we've got then let's first take a look at these Costco I think I got some Costco things down here let's imagine that this was for supplies so and let's imagine this is going to be a business item for supplies and we'll talk a little bit also about a situation where you might use one credit card and you had some business stuff and some personal stuff uh, on the one credit card you would typically want to separate your credit cards using one for business one for personal that'll make bookkeeping easier and if you're having someone else do the bookkeeping it'll make it a lot easier if you're doing your own bookkeeping you might be able to distinguish what you bought for business versus personal but if someone else is trying to do the bookkeeping or if you're doing the bookkeeping for someone else you'd like to be able to say hey you got to separate those because i can't tell if you went to costco for personal or business right you got you, you got to be able to distinguish that so okay so i'm going to say costco i'm going to put that here costco and i'll do a quick setup did i spell it right i think so whatever it's going to be a vendor and then we're going to say the account i'm going to put it to supplies so i don't have supplies set up yet if you were to have downloaded this accounts from the system they probably would have a supplies expense account because we're making our accounts as we go i'm just going to add one supplies tab and i'm going to set up the supplies account and it's going to be an expense type of account now just realize there's a couple issues with costco that are worth kind of just pointing out we've talked about them briefly in the past one would be that is it business or personal we're going to assume everything here is going to be business two uh if you buy something large from costco you might say hey this looks like it's going to be a, a fixed asset and shouldn't be supplies and therefore, you might try to set a dollar limitation in the rules to see if you buy something large from Costco to, to categorize it as a fixed asset as opposed to expensing it. And three, when we have supplies themselves, there's two methods we can deal with supplies. One, the easiest method, the cash-based method, we just expense it when we buy the supplies. That would be completely appropriate with like staples and stuff like that, that we're going to buy paper clips and whatnot. Uh, however, if the, if the supplies go become significant, like say you're buying medical supplies, which become a, a quite costly endeavor, then you might have to treat the supplies kind of like inventory. They're not the same thing as inventory because inventory we typically think of as something that we purchase and then sell the inventory, whereas supplies are going to be the things that we use in the service of whatever service we're doing. So if, we, if we're a doctor and we have medicine then the medicine isn't directly what we're selling oftentimes we don't think about it that way we're selling our medical services and then the supplies are the are going to be a you know an expensive part of, of that of that service if we're using you know whatever cotton swabs and whatever the the, the alcohol that they rub on people and whatnot that stuff can get kind of costly so you want to track it kind of like inventory and that in that case you'd put it on the books as an asset like inventory supplies and then expense it as you use the supplies but we're just going to expense it here okay let's save it and then i'm going to set up a rule for it drop down just like we did with the checking account and add a rule and we'll say that the rule will be what's going to be the rule here's the data up top everything looks good here so i'm going to say let's add a rule i'm just going to call it uh, cost co cost co and i'm going to say all or any does it matter however if we set up a rule in which we're going to say i want everything that's over a certain dollar amount like a thousand dollars or something to not go to supplies but possibly go to then uh possibly go to a fixed asset then you might have two lines here two conditions and we'll talk more about that in the future i just want to be aware of it at this point i'm going to close that back out and so everything looks good so we'll set up the rule okay rules have been made there are rules here this is an anarchy land so then it pulled over the recognized items over here into the recognized added one to the register we got 10 left in the unrecognized let's go up to the uh balance sheet and it's not the checking account that went down now now we've got a credit card account and so if i go into the credit card account it increased the liability if i double click on this it made a credit card charge now a credit card charge is is similar to a checking like a check type form the check form decreases the checking account a credit card charge increases the the credit card liability account now note 
credit cards are a little bit different than the checking because usually we can at least possibly still remember when we wrote actual physical checks. Now most people might have electronic transfers. And in that case, we often entered the transaction in before, uh, before it cleared the bank. With the credit cards, because they're electronic transfers, then we probably, in a full service accounting system, we should enter the credit card transactions as we make them. But a lot of people will rely on the bank feeds, just like we talked about if you're, if you're in like a gig work situation where you're gonna wait till it clears the bank and then record it because there's less, less of a time lag. So if you were doing a full service accounting system again, you would want to record the credit card fees first and then wait till it clears the bank and then double check so that you're double checking that your accounting system matches what the bank is doing. Most people don't do that, at least for small businesses oftentimes because they're all electronic transfers. So you're gonna wait till they clear the bank and then record them oftentimes, but the form will be the credit card form. All right, closing that back out closing this back out the other side went to the PL, the profit and the loss we're down here in the supplies there it is in supplies now if we were going to put the supplies on the books as an asset we would treat it kind of like inventory we'd put it on the balance sheet as an asset up here kind of like inventory we'd count it using a periodic system or a perpetual system whatever we set up and then we would have to you know expense it as we consume the supplies just to touch on that let's go back to the bank feeds and let's look at some other ones here let's say that we got some more of these so so let's let's say let's pretend that this health insurance is actually well actually we've got we've got yeah let's pretend that this health insurance is actually a personal health insurance and not a business kind of thing but we took it out of our business credit card so now the question is well what do i do about that same kind of thing that we saw on the checking side of thing. If you had a personal thing that you paid for out of the checking account, ideally, you'd like to use a different credit card so you don't kind of confuse yourself. But there's two ways we can deal with it. For a small business, you might say, hey, why don't I use class tracking in order to separate the two? Just to note that option, you could go to the, ed the, the edit preferences. You can go into the accounting company preferences and you've got class tracking right here. What that does is on the income statement, it will break out business first versus personal. So you have two columns, so you can kind of have a personal income statement. Uh, it's, it's, it'll only work really well. It'll work well if you have a small business that we just need a schedule C, although it does take more data input because you have to assign a class to every transaction. But that's one option you can experiment with. Uh, the other the other idea would be that you're gonna have two accounts, right? W one QuickBooks file for your personal, one for the business, possibly. And this came out of your business credit card account. So what you'd wanna do is not record it as an expense, but rather record it directly into a draw. So that's what we'll do here. I'm gonna say, let's go payee. Let's say it's Molina, Molina tab. I'm gonna quick add it again, vendor and then it's going to go to the account i'm not going to put it to like insurance expense because it's a personal expense and therefore i'm going to put it into an account called an equity account which will be draws so ideally we would have taken the money out of the business cash draw because that would be easy to see and recognize and then spend it out of our personal checking account so that we don't mess up the the bookkeeping but if we don't do that then i'm just going to record it directly to the draws instead of an expense it won't hit the income statement in this way so there it is and we'll say let's make a rule let's make a rule there's rules around here so we're gonna say rule time here we go so this is gonna be molina 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 it's a money out rule and so there it is it's gonna go molina it's gonna go to the owner draws looks good save it close it save to the reg so there we have that if i go to the balance sheet now we're going to say now we've got the accounts payable the a p uh not the accounts payable i'm doing the credit card there's the credit card so now that one has been gone to draws if i double click on it it's a credit card purchase closing this back out closing this back out other side did not go to the income statement but rather went to draws a contra equity account equity representing what is owed to the owner or in other words the owner's share of assets assets minus liabilities what's owed to a third party is equity 
And so if you, if you take money out of equity, which we did here by paying something that's actually a personal expense, it's gonna decrease the equity. So that's what happened here. That's why it's a negative contra equity account. All right, let's go back to then the bank feeds again, and let's sort it this thusly. And we've got the board of accountancy. So that looks like a business type of thing. So I'm gonna say, let's make that a payee. We'll call it board of accountancy. And then I'm gonna say, add that vendor. And that's usually something like a, a dues and dues and subscriptions or licensing or something like that so oftentimes you might have that in a generic set of accounts but we set ours up from scratch so i'm going to call it i'm going to call it dues and subscriptions because that's kind of a formal name did i spell that right i don't even know whatever whatever it's practice and then I'll, do I need to make a, I should make a rule for it. I'll make a rule, even though there's not any other ones. Don't get lazy. Here we go, make a rule. You need a rule. Rules are important. All right, board of accountancy rule, money out rule, that looks good. We'll save it and save to the register. So boom, that's gonna go back to the balance sheet back to the balance sheet, back to the basics on the balance sheet. And so we got the credit card. So there is that one, double clicking it. There it is. And then closing, closing, and the profit and loss. Now we've got the dues and the subscripts. Closing that back out. Let's go back to the bank feeds. Is there anything else that needs doing? We've got the auto pays, we'll talk about them. This one, Let's imagine this was a charitable contribution, which might be a personal thing again, just to take a look at it. And so note, I'm gonna say this is to the FC Premier Soccer and tab. I'm gonna set it up. Okay, but now I'm gonna put it to equity. So this is gonna be draws. Draw the account, why isn't it? Why isn't it? Cause they call it withdraws or something. They called it owner's draws. So notice this one looks like it could be something that could still have an impact on the taxes if it's a charitable contributions, but it's not gonna come out of my business because I'm imagining it's a sole proprietorship, but instead should be a personal item that I still want to track. That's why you might wanna have a separate uh, QuickBooks account to track your personal expenses so you can at least have the, the information you might need for the taxes in kind of like one place that could be helpful. And it's kind of nice to have, you know, a personal financial statements, even though you don't really need them for taxes. Or again, you could try to use the class tracking where you break out your income statement between the personal and business, but you've, it takes a little bit more work and you got to be careful when you do that. We have a whole course on that if you want to look at that in more detail. So I'm going to say tab and I'm not going to set up a rule for that one. I'll just add and then CVS pharmacy. Let's say that's personal too. So I'm going to say this is going to be CVS pharmacy tab, quick add vendor. And I'm going to say this is owner owners draws. Why? Why doesn't it give me the draws? You know what I want QuickBooks. So we'll say add that. And then these three will keep for for next time because these are the intercompany transactions which are, are gonna be playing off of the checking account. So we're gonna have them in the checking account side coming out, and then we're paying off the credit card. So we'll talk about that next time. If I go to the balance sheet, now the credit card is at the 816. We still have that same beginning balance problem with the credit cards that we do with the bank accounts in that we might've had an outstanding balance before we started the bank feeds. So we'll have to enter that beginning balance in place in order to get our liability correct once it's correct it should be quite easy going forward given the fact that most people enter their credit cards or at least small companies enter their credit cards you know from they make their financial statements from the bank feeds as opposed to entering the data first and then reconciling therefore there's going to be very few times where there's like a, a timing difference as opposed to the checking account where you could have outstanding checks and deposits so we still have the reconciliation concept that we would like to do but it's usually something that's quite easy 
given the fact that we're not really doing a full service accounting system, we're just kind of uh, relying on the bank to enter the data. So we'll talk, but that first reconciliation is gonna be a problem to get the balance correct the first time, if you had a beginning balance, can be a problem, it can be kind of annoying, just like with the checking account, we'll talk about those issues a bit more in the future. All right, let's just open up the trial balance just to check it out because that's what I like to close off with here. So if I open the trusty TB from 010122 to 123122, customize it, fonts and numbers, I like to take it up, take it up a notch to 16. Okay, yes, okay, you can see that now we've got balance sheet on top of the income statement which are assets and then liabilities. Here's our credit card account and then the equity draws and then the income statement, income and expenses, including the cost of goods sold and then the other expenses and then other income and expenses down below. Quite nice, quite tidy, quite easy to go from data input directly to a trial balance without all the subtotals, without having to scroll down as far, without having as much stuff open in the open windows. So I recommend getting used to it uh, and trying it out. Check it out.